their blitzkrieg and the worst daylight raids so far experienced in our country took place. The sudden sound of clanking metals and subdued booms proclaimed the arrival of the Germans in large forces in the air, where a fierce battle raged when a tremendous effort was made to reach London to destroy the docks. 300 bombers and fighters flew in two rows up the Thames estuary and were met over our heads, where over a hundred German aircraft were destroyed by our airmen. Bless them. Swirling and diving, the dogfights made the air vibrant with machine gun fire, and the roar of hundreds of engines swelled to a furious note overhead. All around the fighters, the blue sky seemed to blossom suddenly with the white flowers of parachutes. We were too far from sirens to hear them, but it was fascinating to watch the shell bursts which filled the air like button mushrooms and hear the machine gun bullets rattle against the metal sides of the airplanes. It's getting far too dangerous to watch, said the air raid warden who had come to see me while I sat at my boudoir window watching the exciting battle in the air and begged me to take shelter in the cellar. This is the most violent raid we have yet experienced, he said, as he donned his tin hat. When two or three distinct waves of fighters passed overhead in formation from 20 to 40 strong, at intervals of about half an hour, it seemed useless to remain in the cellar. I could not stand the boredom. With two old servants, we stood in the hallway, watching the battle as German aircraft swept down from heights of above 15,000 feet out of the bright, sunny skies. By night, they greatly increased their attacks. It was impossible to distinguish friend from foe at such a height, nor which it was who descended out of the heavens in parachutes. That night... No attempt was made by any of us to go to bed. Wrapped up in thick coats, I sat in the servants' hall, just above the cellar, which made a wonderful shelter with two exits. As guns fired, bombs crashed, and the engines roared overhead, there was such a lonely feeling. Our little party of two men, four women and a baby, in the middle of a park, seemed picked out for attack. The men, about midnight, rushed in, saying, Your ladyship is in the greatest danger. The whole mansion is ringed with blazing bombs. The noise from the airplanes had ceased, so I asked if there was anything to see. To see, said my butler, the place outside is as light as day from flames. Taking his arm, and that of Harry, I raced him down the old stone passage, out of the back door and onto the lawn. The sight that awaited me was astounding. It was so unreal. It looked like a Wagnerian opera scene. Flames from over a hundred incendiary bombs licked up into the air from the ground, some ten feet. The craters made by delayed action bombs, which sank into the clay soil without exploding, could be seen by the light of the Molotov bread basket bombs that had been showering upon us. They were in the sweep of the drive up into the front door, in the fields and the lanes and the paddock, but marvellous to relate, by the mercy of God, not one had fallen on the great flat roof of the mansion or on any of the wooden outhouses, nor had the four big hayricks been touched. As we stood contemplating if we should attempt to put out some of the flames from the direction of the Thames estuary, once again came the ominous sound of the approach of enemy planes. You, 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 they seemed to say. Not waiting for any further warning, we ran back through the blackout where the light of the flame did not penetrate. We gained the shelter of the house. Woolwich, where damage 
was inflicted on dock buildings, factories, railways. Though 103 German planes were destroyed, the Luftwaffe persevered with grave tenacity. But fortunately, the enemy bomber pilots were no match to our brave airmen. And as soon as contact was established over London, they turned tail and many jettisoned their bombs over us as they broke formation and returned to their base. When our home was commandeered, my 